whenever you see any problem on arrays, what do you think? We can start traversing the array from the beginning or we start traversing the array from the backwards, right? But we often forget that we can traverse this array from both the starting and the end simultaneously, right? And sometimes this approach can give you an efficient solution. There is one such problem on lead code, squares of a sorted array that explores this example. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you this problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see how you can approach this problem using a brute force method and then we will see how you can optimize this solution. Going forward, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an integer array that is in a non-decreasing order. That means the elements are arranged in an ascending order, correct? Now, you need to return me an array that has the squares of each number and that is also in a ascending order, right? What does that mean? This looks pretty straightforward, right? Let us look at the sample test cases now. In our first test case, I have the array 2, 4, 7 and 9. You can see that this array is in a non-decreasing order, correct? So now, if I have to return an array that has the square of each number in a non-decreasing order, what will I do? I will just square each number, correct? And you can see that this array is also in an ascending order and all the elements are squared. So this will be your answer, right? But there is a catch. This array is an integer array, right? And integers could be both negative and positive. For example, in a test case number two, we have this array, right? And you can see that it has negative elements and both positive elements. Right now, this array is sorted in an ascending order, correct? But what happens when you square each of the elements? This will become 16, then 1, then 0, then 9, and then 100, right? If you notice, this array is no longer in an ascending order, right? And that is because when you find the square of a negative number, it will become positive. So the square of minus 4 will be 16. This is a positive number, right? So the correct answer to this test case would be where you took care of all the negative numbers in a correct manner, right? Now, if you want to try this problem once again on your own, feel free. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and see what we can do about it. A good developer always tries to come up with a brute force solution first. That is because a brute force solution guarantees you if a solution to a problem exists, right? So given this array, what is the most naive or the brute force way to approach this problem? You need to find the squares, right? So in the first step, what I'm just going to do is I will square each of the elements and then I get this resultant array, right? Now this array is not sorted. What you can do as step number two? As step number two, you can just sort your array, right? And as soon as you sort it, you will get your final resultant array, right? And this will be your answer. But what is the problem with this approach? This is the correct answer, right? When you try to sort your array, the best time complexity that you can get would be order of n log n. That will be with the quick sort algorithm technique, right? But if you notice, we never take any advantage of the fact that this array is already sorted, right? Even if this array was in any order, you would get your solution in order of n log n, correct? So definitely, we need to find an optimal solution. Okay, so let us take up one more sample array. This array is even bigger and we will try to approach this problem in an efficient manner, right? So what is the first thing that you notice? First of all, you're going to see that, okay, this array is in an ascending order, right? To the left, you have the smallest element and to the right, you have the largest element, correct? But if you notice closely, there is a certain point or you can say somewhere middle in the array. If you look closely, all the elements towards the left are sorted in an increasing order where all of them are negative and towards the right, all the elements are positive and they are sorted in an ascending order, correct? So what I have here is all these elements are sorted and all the elements to the left of this midpoint are sorted. Now you want the squares of all the elements, right? So first of all, let us just square each element, correct? If you notice this same point once again, all the elements to the right of this are sorted 
and all the elements to the left of this point are sorted. Correct? Now, what can you do? You can use the approach of two pointers to arrive at your ultimate sorted array. What I'm going to do is I will have two pointers, one that starts at the head and the other pointer that starts at the tail. And using these head and tail pointers, I can start to populate my final array. To populate this array, what I'm going to do is I will compare the head and the tail because I know that the most extreme elements will be on both of these ends, right? So either this will be the largest element or this will be the largest element, right? So I compare 49 and 100. 100 is greater than 49. So what I'm just going to do is I will copy 100 to the end of this result array and I will move my tail pointer one position back. Now repeat this process. Compare tail and head. This time 49 is greater than 36. So what are you going to do? You will take this 49 and add it as the second last element in your result array. And once you have added it, move your head pointer one step ahead. Once again, just repeat the same process. Compare 16 and 36. Because 36 is larger, I will put 36 in the next available position of my output array. And I will take the tail pointer one place back. Just keep on repeating this process. Compare 16 and 9. 16 is larger, so place 16 over here. So you can see how these head and tail pointers will keep on moving and ultimately they will converge at this middle point. And this is where your iterations would stop and you will have ultimately retrieved your final output array. Just try to fill in these additional elements that I just added as an exercise for you. Now, if you have understood this approach, let us do a dry run of the code and see how this actually works. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have an integer array that has both negative and positive integers and it is passed in as an input parameter to the function sorted squares. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with our dry run, First of all, we create a result array that will store all of our squares in a sorted order and its length will be the same as the input array length, right? So this is the array where I will store all of my results, correct? Now what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we will square all of our elements. So as soon as I square all these elements, it will become 16, 1, 0, 9 and 100, right? Now in the next step, we assign two pointers, a head and a tail. So the head pointer points at the first element and the tail pointer points at the last element, right? That is where the zero and num length minus one comes from. Moving on, what I need to do? I need to place all of these elements in their correct positions, right? And to do that, I will start a for loop, which starts at the last position in my result array and goes all the way to zero. So I will be filling this result array from last all the way to the first element, correct? Now, what I'm going to do is I will compare this head and tail, right? We know that 100 is greater than 16, right? So what do I do? I will land in my else condition and I will assign this tail number to the last position. Once I do that, 100 gets assigned at the last position. And then what do I do? I do a tail minus minus. This will move the tail pointer from the last position to the second last position. Correct? In the next iteration, this loop runs again and this time I will be comparing 16 and 9. Once this happens, I will get 16 in my resultant array and the head pointer will move one step ahead. Similarly, this loop will continue to go on and ultimately you will fill up your entire array. Right? Now, the time complexity of this solution is order of n. That is because we iterate through the entire array only once. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n. That is because we create a result array that will store all of our squares. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say two things. First of all, whenever you see any array or any problem that is given to you in a sorted order, trust me, you have to take advantage of that fact. If you try to approach this problem in any conventional way or try to come around with a different solution, there is a very high chance that you will exceed your time limits. 
So always watch out for the fact that the problem is sorted and try to take advantage of it. The next thing is whenever you are given two sorted lists, it is always a good idea to iterate through them simultaneously. They could be in the same direction, they could be in the reverse direction or they could be in a convergent direction. And when you take advantage of these facts, there is a very high chance that you will land at an efficient solution. Did you see any other problems which use the same two pointer approach? One such problem is merging of two sorted lists, right? What other problems did you see? Can you come up with any other solutions? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problem do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.